here too at BW Pop Fest. Thank you so much for coming. I am so thrilled to be kicking off the day um, with some of the cast of my favorite show, Grey's Anatomy. We do this little feature in the magazine um, once, about once a month or so called Three Rounds With. And what we do is we go and have some drinks with some celebrities and get them talking and stuff like that. So we're going to be staging a live three rounds here with some of the cast of Grey's Anatomy. We'll be drinking a bit and chatting about the show and hopefully um, you'll learn some stuff you didn't know before. Without any further ado, I'd like to bring out the cast. Uh, first up, we have Jessica Capshaw, who plays Arizona Browning. Are you guys drinking too? Yeah. Uh, it's shots for the crowd, though. This is the biggest glass of rosé I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm very excited. You won't be able to ask questions in the third round. <laughs> exactly. Well, cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 Um, I want to talk to you all about your auditions and sort of your entry into Shondaland. And Jessica, I want to start with you. Um, you almost played a very, very different role on Grey's Anatomy. Hold on. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, yes, I did. Uh, I actually auditioned for Grey's Anatomy four times. Because I first came um, to audition for the role of Nurse Rose, who diehard Grey's fans will know was not well well received. <laughs> she sort of came in between Meredith and Derek. It was definitely, definitely destined to be a doomed role, and yet I really wanted it. <laughs> and I didn't get it. Uh, and I came back and read with Patrick, and then I didn't get it. So that's two times. And then I came back a year later for a, um, a role that hadn't even been written yet uh, that ended up going to Melissa George. Um, also, another role is not here anymore. So, evidently, <laughs> it was all good for me <laughs> when I um, just got a phone call saying that um, Shonda had conceived of a three episode arc for a uh, plucky pediatric surgeon, and and then there I was. Three episodes? Three episodes. I've done three episodes for Grey's <laughs> But they invited me, and I was excited to see you all today. <laughs> Uh, Jason, this is a pretty deep cut, but you are already a member of the Shondaland family as a doctor, no less, with the series Off the Map. Um, what are some fans and fans? That's the guy. He's the guy. <laughs> the rest of you, you're the reason why we're not on the air anymore. <laughs> and when you were joining Grey's Anatomy, was there ever thought about bringing your uh, character Otis from Off the Map onto Grey's Anatomy? You know, no, actually, because, uh, well, I... The, I came into Shondaland because I auditioned for a pilot that Shonda was doing called Inside the Box, which none of you have ever seen because it didn't make air. It was a fantastic though. But in that pilot was me, Martin Henderson, and Sarah Drew. Uh, Kim Raver also was on that pilot who came through and uh, lived in Gray's World for a little bit. And uh, I remember I had a massive natural fro at the time. And, uh, and my character was supposed to be a, uh, a White House correspondent. And Shonda was like, would you be willing to cut your... I was like, yeah, there ain't no White House correspondence. Maybe now there are. Yeah, exactly. In an Obama White House, there will be pros in the White House. Um, in the future. Yeah, so, uh, so after that, uh, Shana gave me, uh, I got a call that they wanted me to do a four-episode arc on Grey's Anatomy. And so this role of Ben Warren showed up as an anesthesiologist. And I think I was supposed to originally do Bailey kind of dirty and, uh, and, and, and check out. And you did. And then you did, though. <laughs> well, you do. You continue. I, I stuck around. I said, but uh, but then I think then off the map came up as a pilot, and 
Shauna decided just not to, until she knew, she was like, I kind of like you guys again, so I kind of want to let that ride. And so uh, off the map, when we went and did half a season of that, it didn't take. And fortunately, she didn't kill Ben Warren or turn him into a complete never ass. So I got to come back and hang out for a little bit. So the secret to being on a shot in that show is to be offered like three or four episodes, and then you have a company character. The, the key is, yeah. Jaffa, was that the case with you? Yes. What was, what was your audition like? Uh, I sent a tape in uh, from Toronto where I was living. Any Canadians in the house? Woo! <laughs> Canada. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I sent a tape from Toronto and didn't hear anything for about four months and then found myself driving to, to Los Angeles and it was during that journey that I, that I got a call saying that I had a call back for it and when I landed in Los Angeles I met with, with Shonda and her team and I did another audition and then uh, at the time it was just three episodes and then uh, the writers just kept bringing me back and then it became something larger but uh, very similar stories for sure. Um, Kelly and Jerrica, you are both scandal alums, which I kind of love. Um, yeah. Kelly, I want to yes, round of applause. Wow. Um, Kelly, I want to start with you. Um, what was your audition like? Because yours was a very top secret role um, going into the, going into the season. Like we didn't, all, we had this huge reveal that Meredith had a half sister. We had no idea. Yeah, um, I was auditioning for a couple of episodes um, for a character named Claudette who, uh, what, I mean, that's what it was on the dummy sides, because obviously they don't, they don't like to give the secrets away to randos who are auditioning. So, um, they, you know, they, it said Claudette, and I was like, oh, her name is Dr. Claudette. And I said, <laughs> no one ever. <laughs> 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 I, I, did, I did the read, a couple of days or weeks or whatever were passed, and um, I was offered the job, and they were like, great, so, right. This may be long term, we're not really sure. It's the end of the season now, maybe a couple more episodes following the season. I was like, great, so who is she exactly? And I um, went to set, uh, signed my contract, walked on to set, and Sandra O oh had um, resumes, because my character was, I know, right? Oh. Um, I had, my character was interviewing for the job. So Sandra O oh had these resumes that said Dr. Margaret Pierce that she was looking at, she was my interviewer. And um, I was like, um, no, I'm pretty sure her name is Claudette. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, no, it's not, it's Maggie Pierce. And I was like, what's going on? Who am I? I don't know. And then I met with Shonda and she surprised me with the, the deeper, much deeper backstory. And Jerrica, how about you? My, my, I have a, a similar story as well, wherein uh, I just, I, I did not know my identity. Um, I auditioned for, when they brought in all of us as a, that, that batch of interns, um, I, I auditioned for medical professional number one. Uh, and it was like, you know, this person is smart and capable. I'm like, great, all doctors are. I don't know what you're saying. Uh, and so I auditioned, uh, got a call saying, hooray, you, you've, you've been hired. And I was like, great, what have I been hired for? And they're like, to be on the show. And so, okay, cool. <laughs> in what capacity? I don't know. Um, so I started uh, voraciously doing all kinds of research, and I was like, okay, so on this show, you wear this color scrub if you're a nurse, you wear this color if you're an intern, you wear this if you're an attending, and da 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 And so when, they, when I go in for my fitting, at least I'll know what my job is in the hospital. So I went in for the fitting, I saw the light blue scrubs, I was like, great, intern, awesome, okay. Now still, who am I? And they're like, oh, we don't know, okay. And so I went to pick up my script after the table read, or after the after the fitting, and I and I went up to the production office, and they were like, "Oh, Jerrica, okay, tell me who you're playing again." And I was like, "I don't know, you don't." <laughs> like you're Stephanie, or it's great. Who's that? And so it was a uh, they're the big on the secrecy, really big. And yet, yeah, wardrobe is one of the spots where you can find out stuff. You can find out so many things. It's so true. Uh, Jerrica, Stephanie's been an interesting character, and that's a good, actually, sort of Woo! metaphor of what's happened. Yeah, she's <laughs> right. um, She's been in a, a bit of a slow burn, and like we find out, it's been slow to get to know her, and I've been wondering, do you, did you make up a backstory about her in her head long before sort of the, the backstories come out? I did. Um, la uh, okay, about a year and a half ago, I suppose, uh, I set up a meeting with, with boss lady Shonda Rhimes, uh, to talk about just who, who again, who am I? <laughs> uh, and one of the things that I wanted to pitch in that meeting was giving Stephanie a bit more meat to round her out. Hey, I recognize that face. That's a Twitter face. Um, <laughs> um, where was I? Oh, yes. So, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, maybe with Shonda, yeah. And so I decided to, well not decided, I asked my cousin if I could uh, borrow her, her life a bit because it's, it, you know, she's family, I love her, and it was something that I remember keenly growing up, all of those experiences with her in the hospital and her trial. And so my cousin very graciously allowed me to use a bit of her life to give Stephanie life. Perfect. But did you give it back? <laughs> <laughs> she got the loveliness of knowing her stuff's on TV. <laughs> Is that a thing? Um, Jessica, I want to talk to you about um, Arizona. This is going back many seasons, but um, the plane accident in Arizona. And I was wondering, what type of research did you do around when Arizona lost her leg? What type of research did you do around um, trying to figure out what that would be like? We <laughs> get off my legs. They're real. <laughs> I can feel that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Arizona losing her leg was a surprise to me. I did not know at the end of that season where the plane crash happened that that was going to be her story. And Shonda called me, and she had had a life experience with someone she knew who had lost their leg. And she said, I think it'd be a really interesting story to tell. I just had a baby. That's pretty much all the time. <laughs> I just had a baby. <laughs> and I just had my second baby, maybe my third baby, I'm not sure. And <laughs> but now I just had my fourth baby. <laughs> Anyways, so she called and said, I have this very important story to tell, and I think it would be really great if we did this. And I was completely terrified of it. And as she will say, although she probably won't say because she, she would never sell me out, but I, my, in, my first reaction to almost everything is like, no. No, 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 can't do it, don't think I can do it, can't rise to the challenge, don't, don't think I'm going to do it. And then I sort of sat with it, <laughs> sat with it, and we talked about it. And it was because, to answer your question, it's a huge responsibility. Um, and I didn't feel that I could do it unless I really, really gave it everything. And again, I just had a baby. Um, and so when I went back to work, I did a lot of research. Um, I was greatly aided and abetted by um, a, who was a writer's assistant, Meg, <laughs> who is now a very, very strong part of our writing team. And she had just done tons of research for me, handed it off, and then I had done um, interviews with other amputees and, and things like that. So um, that was the bulk of my research. And then I think that after I got all that information, <clears throat> I sort of ended up knowing that I was never going to know it all, but that my true north should mostly be the storytelling. And as long as I stuck with the script and with what the story that Shonda was intending to tell about what this meant to Arizona, the relationship, and everything else, that I would, I would have the best chance of success. So I think that's a long answer to that question. That's <laughs> answer to that question. Also, a round of applause for our medical researchers because they do, they really do. Um, I think we're ready for round two. Because uh, our, our uh, medical professional on set, Linda Klein, is amazing and, and helps us to make sure that we're woo woo Linda Klein. Yeah. Um, but you Nurse know, Linda sometimes. There, there was just so many things, uh, you know, general rules that I, I didn't know about about you know sterilization and keeping everything clean, and you know, I, I was constantly dropping my hands in my <laughs> surgery, and Linda would be like, God, God, Jack, oh God. What are you doing? And I'm like, I'm, what happened? I'm, she's like, you dropped your hands. You're not, you're not sterile. You can't do that in the surgery. And I was like, oh, God. So, so that was. I told you. So, uh, you know, like little things like that, or or how you grip the instruments. You know, you grab with your thumb and your ring finger, which seems counterintuitive, uh, but you know that's one of those things that if you see that on on TV and and you're not doing that, that she's like, they'll know you're not a doctor. Um, so, just a, definitely a lear, learning curve is basically what I'm trying to get at. Isn't there a bit of a tossing the salad technique? Or petting, Sorry, petting the cat? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, when we have these intense scenes and we're just like, ah, ah, like, yeah, it's a lot. 
<laughs> people, people study a long time to be surgeons. We get like 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that leads me to another question. Um, have any of you been treated like doctors when you are off, when you're off the set, just uh, fans running into you and being like, I've got this rash on my arm and I really appreciate some advice. I, I don't get that, but I did, um, my son went to kindergarten, which was like, you know, a much bigger school. And during like the first or second week, I got a phone call saying um, that he wasn't feeling well. And so I rushed to school and I walked in the door and the nurse is sitting there and she looks at me and she goes, oh, oh, I get it. And I said, I, what, um, I, I'm sorry, what? And my son looks up and he's sitting on the thing and she goes, no, your, your son said that his mom was a doctor. And I She was saying, as a very big fan of Grey's Anatomy, but oh yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a doctor. Tell me about you. No one has ever asked me to do anything for them, but I frequently get asked, you know, like what skill, like, do I ever feel like I could perform? Have I performed enough surgeries at this point, or feel like I might know what to do? And the answer to that is that um, I could cut you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond that, I'm like, screaming. Doing anything else. I actually removed this liver from Kelly's hand once, on set, which was uh, my best work. Oh my god, you have a PhD? That's amazing. I feel like I'd be good with the sutures. I'm gonna, because it's like sewing. Whenever we do that, that's my favorite part of surgery. Whenever we do that, I'm always like, guys, my stitches are so straight and even. Look at that. Nobody ever sees it. <laughs> Next week, you're getting a close-up. Uh, Jason, Ben has had a lot of memorable scenes over the past um, past year, especially with these sort of like um, Rambo surgeries. What has been like the most memorable one for you to film? The most memorable one to film? Yeah. Uh, probably, the, you know, I mean, it's, it's, those, those two, there's the one in the hallway where he, the first pregnant woman I cut. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of memories around that because Giacomo and I were trapped there a couple of different times because we did some reshoots on a Saturday and there's just blood everywhere and it's just a really gory, horrible situation. So you go to Gallows Humor to lighten the mood for us during the day. So there are a lot of photos that you all have not seen of me, Giacomo, and an incredibly bloody pregnant woman all giving thumbs up to the <laughs> or Eight baby included. <laughs> we made the baby give a thumbs up to them, you know, uh, me running with a baby like a football, all these things that are like really wrong in so many different ways that just get us through. But then uh, I have to say, all that went away when uh, I had to cut Sarah Drew for the finale of last yeah, season. Yeah, tell us about that. Well, just Sarah Drew is a hell of an actress, a hell of a person, and beyond the truth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of babies show up on our, our set and, and, and in real life. And so, you know, she had just had a baby a year before, and that was right when she went through, you know, her character went through a traumatic thing, and then she had to, a year later, do basically the exact same thing again. Uh, so, they have, you know, we're cutting her, and originally we weren't going to show her, it was just going to be an off-camera screen, but then Debbie Allen and her brilliance wanted to actually see her face, so Sarah Drew multiple times had to go to the zoo and just give this gut-wrenching scream while I'm cutting her, and just watching her, I just felt for her in every way, so for me, that was one of those things where it was like, you know, you always want to try and protect your scene partners. You want to take care of your fellow actors. And I was like, it was like, are we done now? Can we stop doing this to her? Uh, but she was, you know, but she's ready to go there as often as needed. So that was one that always sticks with me because Sarah Drew's my hero. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, what's been your favorite scene, the most memorable scene to film? Me? Memorable. Ooh. Ooh. Do you just pop that one up? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Oh, there's so many. You know, I kind of go back to the same one, but I think it's because it was. It was the first season I was on, so that was season five, um, when Cali and Arizona had begun their courtship, and everything was just super light and fun and sexy and exciting, and there was this moment where they just danced. I don't even think there was dialogue. And we went to the apartment that they were living in, or no, that Cali was living in, they were dating, and we just danced, and we had so much fun doing it, and it just, I think it was my favorite because it held so much promise, and it was that beginning of a relationship that's just so exciting, and you don't know where it's gonna go, and and there's just, it was just really lovely. I ask this question for Arizona fans. Um, do you prefer playing Arizona as a uh, single,
school and carefree, or did you like the um, relationship with Callie? Oh my goodness. Well, that's such a it's such a multifaceted question and answer because there were a lot of different versions of them in a relationship. There was sort of really, really sad, sad, tragic, and then there was really exciting and excited. I'm really, really happy with where she is now with Arizona meeting. Um, I think that it was such an incredible relationship. I think there was so much respect, excitement, um, nuance, and, and growth that happened during the playing of that. And I think that uh, now that um, Callie is no longer there, and everything is sort of squared away so that somewhere in Shondaland, Callie is actually very happy and in a relationship and with her child, that Arizona can be sort of, I feel like, I hope that the fans can allow for that to be the moment that Arizona really gets to move on and find that dancing moment with someone else sometime soon. I would have round of applause for that. <laughs> Well, you ever seen that sticks out of your mind as one of your most memorable? Gosh. Oh, gosh. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the episode where when Maggie um, and, and Richard, oh, God, hang on, hang on. I'm on the spot now. Um, I talked for a long time. I gave you guys some time to think about it. <laughs> sure. And because of that, I got to go on to another question. Um, <laughs> The episode where uh, we discuss uh, that Ma we discover that Maggie knows that she has the Alzheimer's gene that she inherited from Ellis, um, and but she didn't know that she had inherited from Ellis, and she was scared that she had found it um, or that she had gotten it from Richard, and she finds out that in fact Richard is not the one, and there's like such relief, and and it's the first moment when she realizes how much she really really loves her dad and and there was like this spontaneous very sweet hug and every time I see the photos of that moment I'm like yeah I really felt like it was a really special bonding moment um and 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 that moment when Maggie was like okay I'm safe here I'm cared for here and I can stay and I belong and it was it, that was that was my favorite it's great all right, I want to start going to uh, change gears a bit and play a game called Gray or Nay. And here's the deal. I'm going to say something that may or may not have happened on Gray's Anatomy to the hospital or to the doctors. And if it didn't happen, you say Gray. If it didn't happen, you say Nay. So for example, I'll say there was a plane crash and you'd all say Gray. 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 Um, feel free to ask the audience for help, Jerk. I'm going to start with you. Was there a ferry accident on Gray's Anatomy? Gray. Yay. Giacomo, was a main killer, a main character killed by a bus? Ray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been around as long as y'all. <laughs> Kelly, what kind of the smallpox epidemic ever broken out at the hospital? Nay. No, good one. We have three for three so far. <laughs> An earthquake rocks um, Seattle. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. <laughs> I had a lot of babies. <laughs> Jessica, a tornado rocks Seattle. Nay. Nay. You guys are five <laughs> for five. Jack, we're going back to you. A gunman went on a rampage. Great, yes. great, 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 great. Such a good gray. Such a good gray. That was so good. That was so good. That was so good. That was so good. That was a great gray. That was a great gray. That was a great gray. The hospital burns down. Not yet. Hey. <laughs> yeah, a job. I feel like that's going to happen in season 16 or so. We're due for that eventually. That's the finale finale. <laughs> Everybody done. Oh, uh, maybe it's this one. Kelly, a nuclear disaster. Nah. <laughs> nuclear? 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 Why not? No, no, you're absolutely right. No. I'm a bomb threat. Oh, also, wait, also epic. Oh, yeah, but I mean, Kyle Chandler or Gray. Yeah, it's the same. It's Chandler Gray. Gray, last one, mustard gas. Mustard gas. No, no. You guys are 10 for 10 today. you guys. we are ready for round three. Jason seems to be drinking his. Give all the questions now. Wait, wait, wake up on a Sunday morning. 
Thank you so much. So why do you want to know? Cheers! <laughs> All right, now that I have you drinking, let's start spilling secrets. Um, what is the grossest prop on set? The Scott Boy's head. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Scott Boy's head. Yeah. Explanation. Yes, please. Uh, there is a, Scott Boy was in the show years ago as uh, a character, and so there's a molding of his head that is often used to sub in when we don't have an actor on the table. That's so wrong. Uh, so, if you, if you know Scott Foley, sometimes you turn and look and you're like, how you doing today, Scott? <laughs> and he's like, it kind of looks like Scott Foley's lying on the table, but he's not. Aren't his eyes closed? Yes. Yeah. yeah. What's the head made out of? Like, is it like sort of rubbery? It's like latex. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's a pretty incredible length. <laughs> it's creepy. Yeah. We have some pretty gross babies. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. going to say the babies. I think the babies are the worst thing. I mean, babies are bad. But... <laughs> The ends of the spectrum. <laughs> the fake babies are these are these awful mutant creatures that are like Quato. It's so awful. Wait, do you mean the puppeteering ones, the ones that move? I mean the all ones that move. The, the <laughs> ones that move freak me out the most because the little ones they're like tiny, tiny. Like there was one that the preemie baby that one time, but it was still like robotic. Yeah. And so a little preemie baby going. <laughs> and it's like this alien creature sitting there, and they've like, then they slap cream cheese and all kinds of like yeah. things. Like, the stuff yeah. they used to make it look nasty is all edible, so but raw. Cheese and like raspberry house. jam, that's what they put on the babies. It's like that face is right. And cream cheese. <laughs> it, it's also wrong when they actually shove a piece of meat into, in, into the body, body as yeah. well, so it looks like actual muscle. Like an organ. You know, yeah. Oh my god, I don't know if I can drink anymore. That's a lot. <laughs> yes, you can. It's what we do every day. It's every day. Wait, oh wait, can I add to that the the meat that we often use to operate on? Because the meat well, yeah. itself is not gross, but like when you start um, cauterizing it with yeah, what's the food you call? Bobi. Bobi. Um, you get the smell of like the not quite just burnt meat combined with like the corn syrup or whatever we're using to make the blood, combined with the raspberry jam. It's like, it's really, truly, uh, it's great. <laughs> it's gross. I was gonna ask, so the blood is corn syrup and some red dye? It's, yeah, I mean, it's whatever you buy, yeah. It's, it's sugary, it's really sticky, so it's definitely full of sugar. John, why have you tried it? I've had to have it in my mouth. No, I've had to have it in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> Plane crash. But I think they do. <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, that sounds gross. Yeah. Jerica, what blood did you have in your mouth that was minty? I don't ask questions. <laughs> she got the minty blood. I know. I'll have her proclivities. Um, which, who is most likely to crack up when filming? Jessica. <laughs> and there's I can't even get through scenes with her sometimes. <laughs> so I like to have a good time, people. <laughs> once, once you start, that's when it's all done. It does, it does, it does. Once you crack, it's like a day of breaking. Who on the cast would most likely become a doctor once Grey's Anatomy ends its run? Probably like Sarah Drew. S is Sarah Drew or, or I'm gonna even throw Jerrica in that mix. Sure, why not? I like mess. <laughs> what makes you say Sarah? And she's just such an incredible student. I feel like she's so focused and, and, and I mean, maybe more like she's, I don't know, I don't know. Just Sarah. <laughs> nice. Jerrica, Jerrica, I'm going to start with you, and I'm going to go um, down the row. Um, who would you like your character to hook up with on the show? Nobody. Uh, baby. Um, okay. Who? I don't know. You're not going to get any good answers. <laughs> how about Maggie? There we go. Jack, what about you? Come out and say I got a huge crush on Jason, so let's just get out there. <laughs> it's legal now, ladies and gentlemen, 2016. <laughs> we are in California. You're welcome, Eric. You're welcome. You gonna see me? I'm the only one who hasn't been named yet, so I'm gonna feel lonely if you don't. <laughs> Wait, what was the exact wording of the question? You hook up with? Chris! Oh, oh, You know what? I 
do mean this in the hookup way, but I love Catherine Avery. I, I feel like many can learn so much from Catherine Avery, and I want, I want her to hook up with her to learn from her. Uh, you know, standing in her power. I'm gonna steal her from Richard. I don't, uh, that's hard because Ben is, ben is pretty married. seriously, he's pretty seriously taking care of Sure. That's a hard one. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's pretty serious. Yeah, it's doing that. Stay tried and true. Right. Jessica, how about you? I'm going to put it all out to you. Who would you like for Arizona to hook up with? Oh, good question for the audience. <laughs> exactly. Well, that gets me to the next question, and Jessica, I'll start with you. What, who's the character you'd most like to play on a different Shondaland show? Ooh, ooh, I would have to separate my interests. <laughs> Portia de Rossi's got a pretty nice wardrobe over there on the scandal. Right? right? Not gonna lie. You can work it. You can yeah, work it. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go flirty, period. 
fun, period. <laughs> Incarceration. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily all together. <laughs> Not flirty fun incarceration. It's flirty period fun period incarceration. Is it Eric Zimmerman getting a jailhouse lover, perhaps? You know, crazier things have happened. Jenna, how about you? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna associate myself with transition of power. Yeah. Excellent. Associate my answer rather, not myself. Excellent. Well, that's going to do it for our three rounds with the cast of Boys and Thank you so much. Thank you so much.